hi guys welcome to my channel today I'm going to teach you ANS from lip and coat here you can see we will discuss two to three topics daily inshallah from the lip and coat pharmacology I think that it is the best source to clear your concepts your basic concepts so inshallah we will cover two to three topics daily and uh, in this way at the end we will complete the whole pharmacology from the lip and coat so first of all you can see this is the unit two and drug affecting the autonomic nervous system autonomic nervous system the first heading here is overview so i highlighted the portion here you here the author explains the definition of the ans which is drugs that produce their primary therapeutic effect by mimicking or altering the functions of ans are called autonomic drugs so you can highlight this line this is the definition of autonomic drugs means those drugs that mimic or altering the function of ANS so this is the key point mimic and altering and in the later lines it's not necessary to memorize or something it's just you if you want you can read it but the main point is you have to know the definition of ANS here you can see a flowchart of nervous system the nervous system is divided into two main deviants which is peripheral nervous system and central nervous system the peripheral nervous system are further divided into two efferent deviants and efferent deviants these efferent and efferent words are very important on uh, for your uh, mcqs so you you should know what is the efferent deviants and what are the efferent deviants in in here in this flowchart you can see I can highlight it for you mm. this is the efferent one and the efferent deviants can be divided into two autonomic and somatic and here the somatic one and the autonomic one the autonomic can be further divided into enteric parasympathetic and sympathetic so if you want to learn the deviant of the nervous system you should have to memorize this flowchart this is the flowchart uh, to learn the deviants like first of all the nervous system divided into two parts peripheral and central then peripheral is uh, divided into two deviants efferent deviants and efferent and the efferent one is autonomic deviants and the somatic deviants the autonomic ones are enteric parasympathetic and sympathetic so this is the organization of the nervous system okay so we can go here now there is another heading it which is introduction to the nervous system here uh, which i explained already in the flowchart they are telling here the nervous system is divided into two anatomical deviants the central nervous system which is composed of the brain and spinal cord so you can highlight this part I can do with red the brain and the spinal cord it's a brain and a see this is the highlighted portion which I highlighted for you the deviance and the major one is the brain and spinal cord so you should know 
the deviants and the pathway nervous system which includes neurons located outside the brain and the spinal cord so there are two anatomical deviants sander nervous system and peripheral nervous system sander nervous system contains brain and spinal cord and peripheral nervous system contains the neurons which is outside the brain and the spinal cord that is any nerves that enters or leaves the cns so peripheral nervous system consists of nerves and the sander nervous system consists of the brain and spinal cord the peripheral nervous system is subdivided into efferent and efferent here you can see the deviants the peripheral nervous system is divided into efferent and efferent i underlined this part so i can highlight it for you you should know the peripheral system is for the efferent and efferent deviants see so here they are explaining the efferent neurons what are the efferent neurons efferent neurons carry signals away from the brain and spinal cord to the peripheral tissues efferent neurons are those which carry signals away from the brain and spinal cord to this peripheral tissues matlab efferent wo hai jo brain aur spinal cord se signals lekar jati hain periphery mein peripheral tissues tak lekar jayenge like they have uh they have to supply these signals to the peripheral tissues so this is the definition of the efferent neurons and the efferent neurons bring information from the periphery to the cns so this is the periphery to the cns so uh, up till now we have discussed introduction to the nervous system the nervous system if you want you can write here what you have learned you uh, you learned the ans definition introduction to the nervous system in this you have learned a uh, deviant like two deviants the main point is two two deviants cns and ans right and then you have learned the ans the ans ans to uh, divide into two deviant cns and pns peripheral nervous system okay and here we are discussing about the peripheral nervous system which peripheral nervous system uh, in which we have studied the efferent neurons efferent or efferent neurons okay so you can see the efferent one are those which carry signals from brain and spinal cord to the peripheral tissues from brain or spinal cord to peripheral tissues
and the next one is front which is from periphery to brain okay so here you have learned these things these are the important one the definition of efferent neurons and the definition of the efferent neurons the efferent neurons uh, provide sensory input to modulate the function of the efferent deviants uh, it's ultimately when if efferent takes signals to brain and spinal to brain and spinal cord then efferent takes signals from the brain and the spinal cord to the uh if peripheral tissues okay uh you can see from here i can show you in the flow chart Here you can see it easily. This is the visible picture of efferent sensory nerve, which is called the efferent, and the motor nerve, which is called the efferent. See, here is the spinal cord, and you can see the efferent neurons taking signal away from the spinal cord. at this point and the efferent neurons are taking signals towards the spinal cord so you can take this from google search i hope you understand this thing there's a clear picture of the spinal cord and the efferent neurons and the efferent neurons so come to the our topic and the second heading that we are going to discuss is functional deviants within the nervous system the functional deviants we are going to study the functional deviants okay the uh, here you can see the flow chart which is the efferent neurons of ans efferent neurons of ans you can see there is a brain stem or spinal cord and big and glonic neurons taking signal from the brain and the spinal cord and which are at the ganglionic transmitter transfer to the neuro effector transmitters like transfer to the post ganglionic neurons these ganglionic transmitters help in uh, converting these signals and which are travel through post ganglionic neurons uh, to the effector organs so this is the point this is the efferent neurons which are taking signals away from the brain or spinal cord so functional deviants here you can study the efferent portion of peripheral nervous system is further divided into two major functional deviants subdeviants the somatic and the uh and the somatic and the ans and the autonomic nervous system you can see here the efferent deviants are divided into ans and autonomic system and somatic system so efferent are those which are taking away signals from brain and spinal cord to the effector organs you have to learn this the somatic efferent here i am study here 
I just off this. Okay, the somatic efren neurons. This is this is the point. I'm here at this point. This 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 is the line. I can underline it for you. The somatic efren neurons are involved in the voluntary control of functions such as contraction of skeletal muscles essential for locomotion so the somatic efren neurons uh, this is the definition of somatic efren neurons somatic efren neurons are involved in the voluntary control of functions such as contraction of skeletal muscles essential for locomotion So here is the key point is voluntary control functions. This is the voluntary control function. Somatic if neurons are involved in the voluntary control functions which are under our control like the skeletal muscles uh, uh, essential locomotion and something which we can control by ourselves. Voluntary control functions are those which we can control by ourselves. The ANS and the second heading is the ANS. ANS currently regulates the everyday requirements of the vital body functions without the conscience participation of the mind. So those functions which are under our control are, uh, are undergoing the hiding somatic efren neurons and those which are not under our control are ANS. Because of the involuntary nature of the ANS as well as its function, it is also known as visceral or vegetative or involuntary nervous system. So you have to learn ANS also called visceral vegetative or involuntary nervous system. So up till now we have learned uh, the functional deviance in our system which is the uh, efferent portion and efferent portion. First of all, we have studied the efferent portion. The efferent portion are further divided into two parts, autonomic and somatic. The somatic one, which is under our control, like the skeletal muscles, which are we use for our locomotion. And the ANS, autonomic nervous system, which is not under our control. Autonomic system, which is not under our control. So it also called visceral, vegetative or involuntary nervous system visceral if we say visceral nervous system which one is a visceral nervous system is the autonomic nervous system it is composed of the efferent neurons that innervate smooth muscles of the viscera cardiac muscle vasculature the exocrine glands and they were controlling digestion cardiac output blood flow glandular secretions here you can see i have put uh, a mark which, which can you explain what is the cardiac output so cardiac output is the amount of blood pumped by heart each minute so here you can uh, find the def definition of uh, cardiac output so i hope you understand the functional deviance within the nervous system which is the efferent portion and uh, uh, which is divided into the ans and somatic system and the somatic system is the one which is under our control and ANS which is the one which is not under our control and ANS are also called as visceral, vegetative and involuntary 
so this is the key point visceral nervous system we can say ans we we are familiar with the word ans but we are not familiar with the visceral vegetative so examiner can confuse you with the visceral vegetative word the next heading is the anatomy of the nerve ans anatomy of the ans efferent neurons uh, in the anatomy of the ans there are five headings are involved you can see first of all i have shown you headings efferent neurons efferent neurons sympathetic neurons and down like parasympathetic neurons and enteric neurons so these are the anatom anatomy of ans first of all we have study what is the ans what is the nervous system then we study the division of the nervous system nervous system divided into the central nervous system and the autonomic nervous system sorry peripheral nervous system and then we have studied the peripheral nervous system and the peripheral nervous system are divided into the two types peripheral uh, uh, efferent deviants and efferent deviants then we have studied the efferent deviants efferent deviants are divided into the a a ans and somatic uh, system the somatic system which is under our control and the ans uh and the ans which is not under our the control that's why it's also called visceral vegetative one now we have uh, going to study the anatomy anatomy of ans which included efferent neurons efferent neurons uh sympathetic neurons parasympathetic neurons and uh, enteric neurons five neurons uh, efferent sympathetic parasympathetic and the enteric so efferent neurons of the ans system efferent neurons the ans carries nerve impulses from the cns to the affected organs by way of two types of efferent neurons the preganglionic neurons and the postganglionic neurons you can see here in the flow chart this is the efferent neurons preganglionic and the postganglionic the cell body of the first nerve cell the preganglionic nerve is located within the cns the cell body of the first nerve cell the preganglionic neuron is located within the cns the preganglionic neurons emerge from the brain stem or spinal cord and make a synaptic connection in the ganglia and what is the ganglia Gang there is a definition of the ganglia and aggregation of the nerve cell bodies located in the peripheral nervous system so ganglia is the aggregation of the cell bodies Uh, you have to learn this point the aggregation of cell bodies means uh, this aggregation you can use it in the mcqs what are the ganglia the aggregation of the cell bodies and the cell bodies are present in the brain the ganglia function as a relay station what is the function of the ganglia and can you define ganglia and wh what is the function of ganglia so ganglia function as relay stations between the preganglionic neuron and the second nerve cells the postganglionic neuron so you can see in the flow chart here is the brain stem or spinal cord in which the cell body is present then this cell body is uh, 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 connected with the ganglionic transmitter like the ganglia and by uh, with the help of the preganglionic neurons and these preganglionic uh, neurons um, these in preganglionic neurons and make a synaptic connection in the ganglia it, it's a synaptic connection they are making in the ganglia and what is the ganglia the aggregation of the cell bodies and also we can say the aggregation of the cell bodies and its function is as a relay station between preganglionic uh, its function is as a relay station its, its function is as a relay station between preganglionic and the postganglionic ganglia function as a relay station between the preganglionic and the postganglionic the cell body of the postganglionic neurons originates in the ganglion 
So you can see. You can see the cell body of the postganglionic neuron originates in the postganglionic neuron. The cell body of the postganglionic neuron originates in the ganglion. So you can see the pre uh, cell body of the pre-ganglionic neuron present the cell body I highlighted this part the cell body of the pre-ganglionic neuron pre-ganglionic neuron and its cell body present in the brain stem or spinal cord and the cell body of the post-ganglionic neuron present in the ganglions ganglions may present with here so this is the uh, key point for MCTs the cell body of the pre-ganglionic neuron present in the brain and the cell body of the post-ganglionic neuron present in the ganglionic transmitter in, in present in the ganglion It is generally non myelinated and terminates on affected organs such as smooth muscles of the viscera and cardiac muscle and exocrine glands. The cell body of the postganglionic neurons originates in the ganglion. It is generally non myelinated and terminates on affected organs such as smooth muscles of the viscera cardiac muscle and the exocrine glands so this is all about the efferent neurons you have to learn the efferent neurons uh, have two deviants peripheral and uh, uh, sorry uh, the pre-ganglionic and the post-ganglionic the cell bodies of the pre-ganglionic present in the brain stem uh, and uh, the cell bodies of the pre-ganglionic present in the brain stem and the cell bodies of the post-ganglionic present in the ganglion so so these are the post ganglionic uh, neurons generally non myelinated and terminates on affected organs such as smooth muscles viscera cardiac muscle and exocrine glands the next I think is afferent neurons. The afferent neurons of the ANS are important in the reflex regulation of this system. For example, by sensing pressure in the carotid sinus and aortic arc. And in signaling the CNS to influence the afferent branch of the system to respond. So we already have discussed the afferent nerves which carry signals. which carry signals from uh, the tissues from to the brain and from the periphery to brain and the spinal cord and then brain and the spinal cord process these signals and transfer to the periphery and tissues you are very well familiar with the example of uh, uh, touching the hot bottle when you touch the hot bottle uh, you automatically put back your hand uh this is because of the afferent signals that is transferred from the periphery um sensory nerves uh to the brain and then from the motor nerves from the brain and spinal cord uh after processing they send signals to the periphery by the efferent nerves or the of uh, motor nerves so you are able to take back your hand so this is the basic example of efferent and afferent. The next one is the sympathetic nervous system. The efferent ANS is divided into the sympathetic and parasympathetic. Now we are discussing about the efferent one, which sends signals from brain to the periphery, are consist of two types, sympathetic and parasympathetic, as well as the enteric system and iterating nervous system are also included in this so you can see here here they have mentioned the figure 3.1 this one 
ANS, enteric, parasympathetic, ANS, sympathetic, parasympathetic, and enteric one. Okay. So the sympathetic system comes from the eye here at this point. Sympathetic system comes from the thoracic and lumbar region T1 and uh, 2L2. So you have to learn the origin of a sympathetic system of the spinal cord and they synapse in two cord like chains of ganglia that run close and parallel each other side of the spinal cord. The preganglionic neurons are short in comparison to the postganglionic ones. This is the very important line. You should memorize this line. The preganglionic nerves are short in comparison to the postganglionic uh, axons of the uh, in comparison to the postganglionic ones. So, in the sympathetic nervous system, the preganglionic ones are short as compared to the postganglionic ones. Axons of the postganglionic neurons extend from these ganglia to the tissue that they innervate and regulate. In most cases, the preganglionic nerve endings of the sympathetic nervous system are highly branched and enable one preganglionic neuron to interact with many postganglionic neurons. This arrangement enables this deviant to activate numerous effector organs at the same time. The adrenal medulla, there is a knot uh, which is saying the adrenal medulla like the sympathetic ganglia receives preganglionic fibers from the sympathetic system. The adrenal medulla in response to stimulation by the ganglionic neurotransmitter acetylcholine secretes epinephrine and lesser amounts of norepinephrine directly into the blood. So this is the uh, sympathetic nervous system. Uh, you have to learn what are the efferent ANS and what is the sympathetic nervous system the origin of the sympathetic nervous system here This is the origin of this sympathetic nervous system, which is the thoracic and the lumbar region. And the other important point is that uh, the pre-ganglionic nerve fibers are shorter than the post-ganglionic ones. So, uh, the next heading is the parasympathetic nervous system. The origin of the parasympathetic nervous system is. Cranial nerves. And these are the cranial the ocul oculomotor, facial, and glossopharyngeal and vagus, as well as from the sacral region, as to the form of the spinal cord and synapses. In ganglia near or on the factor organs. 
The Vegas nerve accounts for 90% of the pre-ganglionic parasympathetic fiber in body. Post-ganglionic neurons from this nerve innervate most of the organs in the thoracic and abdominal cavity. So thus, in contrast to the sympathetic system, the pre-ganglionic fibers are long. Important point for the sympathetic neurons. The pre-ganglionic fibers are long in case of parasympathetic and post-ganglionic ones are short with the ganglia close to or within the organ innervated. There is one-to-one -one connection between the pre-ganglionic and post-ganglionic neurons enabling discrete response of this system. So in the sympathetic nervous system, pre-ganglionic fibers Uh, pre-ganglionic fibers are short and post-ganglionic ones are long and the parasympathetic system the pre-ganglionic fibers are long and post-ganglionic ones are short so you can write this as a key point enteric neurons the enteric nervous system is the third division of ANS it is a collection of nerve fibers that innervate the GIT pancreas gallbladder and it constitutes the brain of the gut so enteric nerve mostly enter in the gut, in the stomach. The gut, pancreas, gallbladder, or GIT tract undergo by the enteric neurons. This system functions independently of the CNS and controls the mortality, exocrine, endocrine secretions, and the microcirculation of the GIT. It is moderated by both the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. So it undergoes by both systems brain of the gut which one is the brain of the gut is enteric neurons so up till now we have studied the nervous system which is divided into two types Central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Peripheral nervous system are divided into efferent deviants and efferent deviants. Efferent one ANS and the somatic system. Uh, somatic system which is under our control like skeletal muscles and ANS which is not under our control that's why it is also called viscera or vegetative and this is the uh, further divided into enteric, parasympathetic and sympathetic one. The sympathetic uh, for the sympathetic the important point is pre ganglionic fibers are short and post ganglionic are long and for the parasympathetic the uh, pre ganglionic ones are long and post ganglionic ones are short so this is the organization and we also studied the efferent neurons of ANS which consist of the pre ganglionic neurons and post ganglionic neurons the pre ganglionic the brainstem or spinal cord the uh, cell body of the pre-ganglionic are lying the brainstem or spinal cord and the cell body of the post-ganglionic lying the ganglion. So here is all about for today. I hope you understand my lecture. If you have any question, you can ask in the comments. So like my video, subscribe my channel and uh, never forget to click on the bell button.